Hello, it's Kai here from Portworks and today I'm really quite excited because I get to show you Mesos running on Amazon using DCOS and then we'll install Portworks storage. This gives us a scaled out storage fabric that we can run stateful workloads on our Mesos cluster. And then I'm going to show you some really cool features like automatic failover and taking snapshots on production data and running tests on those snapshots. So before we dive into the good stuff, let's set a little background. You've probably used websites like Apache Siri or Twitter. Now they run at such a huge scale, the complexity of the thousands of compute nodes that they need would be very difficult to manage manually. So an enterprise grade solution to this is Apache Mesos. It's a tool that came out of a research paper from Barclay and Twitter were early adopters and since then it's been adopted by many other companies. It pulls compute nodes and makes them available as a single resource of compute to pluggable frameworks. And the frameworks have an opinionated approach to how they use those resources. You've probably noticed that in the last few years, there's been a huge adoption in containers and in particular Docker. Marathon is a Mesos framework that can schedule Docker containers onto your cluster. This lets developers focus on the code they're writing, i.e. the Docker file letting Marathon think about the node that their container ends up running on. DCOS, or the Data Center Operating System, is a packaged version of Mesos and Marathon, along with other tools, built by a company called Mesosphere. It has a nice looking GUI and a CLI tool to make operating a Mesos cluster running Marathon easier. So let's talk about the stateless and stateful side of running a Mesos cluster. Everything we've described so far would be really great if our entire workload was stateless. So a Twitter bot that was essentially using Twitter as the database or a Google Maps API client or something. However, in the real world, we're probably going to have something stateful in our app stack like Postgres or Redis. If we were writing apps using the 12 factor manifesto, or as I like to call it, how Heroku want you to write your apps, we could run the stateful services externally on static VMs, kind of like pets rather than cattle. This seems like a shame. We've got the full power of an industrial grade container scheduler, but still have to manually manage some of our stack. What if we had a tool that treated our heterogeneous compute cluster as a heterogeneous storage cluster too. Well, enter Portworks. Portworks storage offers a container aware storage fabric that will run on a commodity cluster of compute nodes. This lets us schedule a stateful workload like MySQL or Postgres using Marathon and not worry if it ends up on node A, B or C. Portworks storage will provision the volume before the container starts because Portworks storage offers replication, we've automatically got high availability for our Postgres, Redis, MySQL, or otherwise stateful container. If the container lands on another node, Portworks storage ensures the data is there. We can also take snapshots of existing volumes and then run other workloads against the snapshot volume. For example, we could easily run a test suite against a snapshot of production data only a few seconds old. Right, let's get to it and run through the demo. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our Amazon control panel where we have nothing running currently. It's important to make a key pair in a region before we start this stack. So I've chosen EU West Island. Um, let's check that we have a key pair in that region and we do Kai demos. So if you don't have a key pair, create one and download the PEM file and keep it locally. So once we have a key pair, the next step is to spin up a DCOS cluster using CloudFormation. And so to do that, we use the CloudFormation template for DCOS. Before we begin, we need to choose the same region we just made a key for, or we already had a key for. So in my case, it's EU West 1. And we're going to launch a single master stack um, in EU West 1. So we click the launch button. It comes up with the template confirming that we already link to an existing template. Uh, click next on that button and here we get to name our stack. So I'm going to call it PX Demo. Um, 
the key name is the key that we just created or already had. Uh, we're going to disable OAuth because then it makes it much easier to access. But if you were doing this properly, you would have security access, obviously. We're going to have three slave nodes because we're going to run the Portworks Developer Edition. And that's limited to three nodes. You could run the Enterprise version on up to a thousand nodes if you wanted. Um, right, let's confirm those settings for the DCOS stack. Um, this role, this screen doesn't need um, any settings, so we can skip to the next one, and it's just confirming all our options here. So, the last thing to do is to check the I am roles button at the bottom of the screen here and click create. This stack will take maybe 10 minutes or so to spin up, so it might be time to go and read Hacker News or something, and we'll be back shortly. So, now our stack has spun up, we can get the dashboard for the DCOS cluster by selecting the stack here and going to the outputs tab we want the DNS address of the Mesos master uh, so let's copy that URL and open a new tab and go to there and here we have the DCOS dashboard so we can see we have CPU shares, memory we have nodes here, we have four slaves, one public slave and three um, private slaves. We're going to run portworks on the three private slaves, right? So let's first of all install the DCOS CLI tool. Here's the icon in the bottom left. We click that, we select the command to install. Uh, we shift to our terminal and we run the command. Um, so it's going to be downloading the DCOS command for us and installing it into user local bin. Um, we might already have one there and because it's in user local bin it needs a password there we go we're going to overwrite the existing one and now we have a DCOS command wonderful the first thing we're going to do is take a look at DCOS node this makes sure our DCOS command line can see all the nodes in the cluster the next step is to set up docker on each of the nodes because portworks requires shared mount namespaces uh, this is because it's going to be running inside a container and needs to modify the mount table on the host we'll let that spin up and that's done so the next step is to attach some storage to our nodes so portworks will pull a block device on every node into a homogeneous cluster of storage um, so we're adding a 10 gigabyte EBS block device to each node running this script and when we run portworks we'll tell it to attach dev sdf which is the block device we're attaching here. Um, we're running three portwork nodes so 10 gigabytes on each node gives us a 30 gigabyte storage pool. Uh, we could run 100 gigabyte disks and have a 300 gigabyte storage pool. Um, cool. That's done. So we now have block devices for our storage cluster on each of the slaves. If we run this command, it will log into each of the slaves and check that XVDF, this 10 gigabyte disk at the bottom there, is mounted on each node. The next step is to install the DCOS services that we need for Portworks. So that is etcd, a distributed key value store. Uh, Portworks uses etcd to distribute the state of all the volumes and which node they're attached across the cluster. So we're using the dcos package install command there to install etcd. We're also going to install the marathon load balancer because we're going to demonstrate a stateful web application and we need to get to the web application from the outside internet. So whilst that's happening we can check that in the dashboard because we have some allocations here. The services we're running are etcd and marathon load balancer and you can see they're now both running. Um, great, so let's take a look at the next step. Now we're going to configure Portworks and Portworks needs to know the address of the etcd server that we just span up using DCOS. So let's use an admin script to generate the config file that Portworks requires and we are basically pointing Portworks at etcd um, and we got that address from the Mesos cluster because we just deployed an etcd service to it. Um, we're going to write that config to a file pxopsons.json so the next step is to use that configuration file to deploy the Portworks service to DCOS. So we're going to say DCOS package install we're going to point at the config file we just generated and we're going to use the portworks service and so off it goes and if we go back into the dashboard we can see here the portworks service is spinning up and it will be deploying 
three containers across our three slave instances. So we can see the three Portworx containers are up and running and healthy. We can also see this from the DCUS dashboard alongside etcd and marathon load balancer we deployed earlier. So now we can SSH into one of the nodes running Portworx and check the status of our storage cluster. To do this, we can use a command line tool called PXCTL. The Portworx container has installed this for us and we run it using slash opt pwx bin pxctl status. So that gives us the status of our storage cluster and we can see our three private Mesos slaves, each offering the 10 gigabyte EBS drive that we added using the script earlier. Great. So if we check the pxctl volume list command, we can see we have no volumes. Let's create a volume ready for our application to use. We're going to create a volume called app prod. We're going to share the volume and replicate it three times. It's going to be a five gigabyte volume. So let's create that volume and pxctl is communicating across the cluster. And if we list our volumes, now we can see we have our app prod volume ready. Let's inspect the volume and then we can go and deploy an application that will use it. We can see there's no read or writes so happened on that volume yet as we'd expect. Let's leave the Coros node back onto our command line. We have a app JSON manifest. Uh, this is a marathon manifest that will run a simple app for us on our cluster. Notice that we're configuring the PXD volume driver for Docker and we're telling it to use the app prod volume that we just created. It's a very simple application that uses a file to keep its state. But if you imagine this application being MySQL or Postgres, which also keep files to keep their state, it's much the same as any of those databases. Right, let's deploy this application and watch Marathon do its magic. We use the DCOS Marathon app add command to send that JSON file into the cluster. Once we do that, we can see it's created a deployment. If we come onto the DCOS dashboard, we can see our PX counter app is busy deploying. So we can see the PX counter has started and we need to get a URL um, onto the load balancer service so we can see that container. Uh, let's use in our script, we have an app endpoint command that knows where the load balancer lives and will open it for us in a browser. So. This is our app. It's the most exciting, useful app in the world. It makes lots of Portworx logos appear on the screen. Now the key thing is every time I click, a logo appears, but it writes to a file. So when I refresh, it's the data that I had there just now, because the app every time I click is writing that data to disk, much like a database would. So great, I have my app running and everything is good. I can reset the state and Let's create a line of logos down the right hand side so we can remember very much that this was the production data that we just created. Right, uh, refresh, the data is still there. The next step will be to simulate a fail of a node. Uh, we're going to kind of do this in a cheeky way by logging into a node and killing the Docker container. Now Marathon will notice that that container went away and will reschedule the container to run again. Because that container is using a Portworx volume, the data will still be available. First of all, let's check DCOS to see which node our app is running on. We can see the PX counter app is running on 102193. Let's run uh, our chaos monkey script that will kill the app container. And we can then see the DCOS dashboard uh, react to that container being killed. Um, it will say, hey, look, something's happened. I'm going to redeploy it. There we go. The PX app is back running. If we go to the browser and refresh, we can see that our state is still there. If we use the um, DCOS task command, we can see now the PX counter app has landed on a different node to the one it was before. Because it's using a portwork storage volume, however, the data is still there and everything that just happened was automatic. Marathon and Portworks working together to make high availability really work. Great, so let's move on. Our next step is to say we want to deploy another version of our app that will run some tests but against a production version of data that we just took. To do this, we use Portworx snapshots. 
Once again, let's SSH into a Portworx node and then create a snapshot from our production volume. Um, we can use the snap create command to take a snapshot of our app prod volume and name it app CI test. Uh, Portworx will create a snapshot of our production data and we can see that snapshot using the snap list command. Great. Let's come out of that node and let's deploy another application for which we have a manifest here. And this application is set up to use our app CI test snapshot that we just created. It's also configured to run a test suite against that data. Let's deploy that, that test application using Marathon. Okay, it's created a deployment. We're now going to look at the DCOS dashboard. We can see the PX counter test application is spinning up. Whilst that's happening, let's diverge the production data such that now the test data only has this list down the right hand side and the production has these new logos I just created. The last step will be to open the test website in a browser to check that it had the data from only a few seconds before without these new logos I just clicked. So let's do that. We're going to use our script to open up the different endpoint the test has. And there we go. We can see four Portworx logos down the right hand side. Now, something interesting is the test suite itself wrote some data. That's this Portworx logo in the top left. Now, that's important because we safely did that against a snapshot of production data, not the actual production data, which is back here, happily continuing to run and hasn't been modified by the test. So that's everything for a minute. I hope you've enjoyed the demo and I seriously recommend checking out Portworx Developer Edition running on DCOS. As you've seen, some of the features are really quite useful. Thank you very much. Goodbye.